or say dry bone too. Yeah. In fact, the, the two cases God has dealt with now are, are very terrible cases. Yeah. Yeah. So it's also a dry bone case. Oh. Yes. Sir. I remembered my BK mistress. You will, you will know. Are we online, please? Okay. You will know my, our BK mistress. Then. I didn't know I was going to preach the gospel. I didn't know. I was a pure science student. And I needed just one. You couldn't do eight, uh, seven subjects. So you have to do eight. And I said, what, what course will I add? Let me add BK. Just for the fun of it. So I added BK. But, uh, to the glory of God, when I got there, I started topping the class. So she made me the class captain. You understand? And I remember that she would say something to the whole class. He said, if this guy, this is the man that will vindicate me. He said, the, the rest of you can get F9. <laughs> but I know that this guy will make it and vindicate me that I'm a good teacher. And I made A1. Your son. I, I did not know that. I just went to play. Oh, I don't know. I didn't need it. <laughs> I was an engineering student. I just I didn't need BK. But God saw today. The woman said, you will vindicate me. Because every time we, we do, we did whatever, I, I impressed that to the glory of God. So you will be the one to vindicate me. Uh, the rest of you can get F9 is none of mine. But this person, because I'm going to prove that, okay, if I was a bad teacher, how come I have someone? And she didn't know what I was going to make in school sat. She did not know what I was going to make in school sat. But she boasted on me. And uh, I stretched that I shouldn't disappoint this woman because I'm the one that we go and give. When they are serving punishment, your stand, I would really want to give portion to people where to hoe and to rick. Because they, made, yeah, because they made me the class captain. And to the glory of God. You know, I didn't know God then. We could be so arrogant then. After the school sat, I told uh, Don. I said, if there's anything, A half. A half, not A one. I'll be the first to make it. Can you imagine that? Thank God the paper did not get me. <laughs> Thank God mercy found me. And I, and I made A one. And I vindicated whatever. So what am I trying to say? When I was in California... I can't forget. I was in the hotel room where I went to preach and I heard the voice of the Lord. He said, the next low work, the next low work, street dry bones shall rise again. So it was not a topic I chose because I, was, I have mastered it. In fact, it is in the course of even treating this subject that my eye began to open. Amen. I just had. But now, for four people, at least potentially, four people to have their stay, your stand. <laughs> Amen. Like that became his dress, I've been vindicated. <laughs> That's where I'm going. Like that became his dress, I've been vindicated. You know, because if we teach something, and somebody comes out on top. Amen. Amen. They can't say you are a bad whatever. Because the Bible says God will not leave himself without what? A witness. He didn't say witnesses. He said a witness. So if God can get just one, that shows that he spoke. Oh, you didn't get what I'm trying to say. But we want it for everyone. Amen. Are you going to be included? You are going to be included. I want you to pray. Raise your hand that, Father, my own testimony or testimonies are on the way. Just pray it. That, Father, my own testimonies are on the way. My testimonies are on the way. Just pray it. Pray it. That my testimonies are coming. 
My testimonies are coming. My testimonies are coming. Thank you, marvelous Father. In Jesus' mighty name. As we keep standing, there is something I want us to do. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Because there is something I want us to do. Are you ready to do it? Let's read together. Matthew 18, verse 18. Who is projecting Acts? Amen. Let's, let's be here. Let's read it. 18. Okay. Verily, I say unto you. Someone who doesn't lie. Someone who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Says truly. Yeah. Think of it. Somebody who cannot lie. Says truly. So what if he could lie? He would have said, truly, 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 truly. You did get what I'm trying to say. The person who said this was Jesus. If you have your Bible, it is written in red. Amen. Amen. So, every time you see words written in red, they were the direct words that Jesus Christ spoke. It doesn't make the one written in black the word of the devil. Yeah. It's still the word of God. It's just to bring out the statements that were made directly from the lips of Jesus. Are we here? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the truth says, truly I say to you. Can you, can you imagine that? If I were you, I will, I, will, I will look at it very well. Someone who cannot lie say, says, I'm telling you the truth. Ha, please, think of, think of what I'm saying. Someone who cannot lie. Who it is impossible for him to lie. He said, I am telling you the truth. So what were you telling us before? Amen. Amen. So if we didn't act truly, so what were your words before? Lies? Oh, please. If you are with me, just shout, yeah. yeah. So what do you think Jesus is trying to, was trying to do here? Your stand to tell you that I'm not joking with this. To tell you that, please, take this seriously. Yes, sir, I know I can't lie, but this is super truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he now said, verse 19, let's see. Now, the first one is talking about the individual. The second one is talking about more than an individual. Yeah. If we check the first one, it says, whatever you shall bind. Singular. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Or plural. But it said, again, I say unto you that if two, the first was an individual, Oh God. So don't wait for anyone before you bind that devil yeah. out of your hand. He said, Whatever you shall bind, you as an individual. He now said, Again, I say unto you that if two, so he wasn't talking to two in the first place. Oh God. Uh -uh. Are we here? Can you shout it powerful so that you to help to help? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. Amen. So let your response also show you are here. Yes, sir. Now he said, again I say unto you, 
that if two, if he was talking to two people, he couldn't have been saying, I say again, I say unto you, if two. He wasn't talking to two people. He was talking to you as an individual. Amen. Amen. He was talking to you as an individual. He now says, come, even collectively. Are we here? Yes, sir. Now let's, let's read it now. Again, I say unto you, Did you see the them? Yes. Not him. Not her. Them. Are we here? Yes, so we, we've always been declaring by the grace of God I want to do that again because we are more than two. Is that not so? Yes, we are more than two. Can I say something? When two people agree and they pray and you quarrel, the person cannot take away his or agreement. It is the agreement of the day you pray that stands. So don't think that now that uh, we are not on talking terms, your son, I'm going to show you. I agree with you that you are going to buy a rose rose, you won't buy it again. It's, it's too late. It's you see, we, in, in heaven, your stand. No, no, no. The, the two of you also have to agree to cancel that first agreement. If the man says, I'm not in agreement with you, we agree the other day. The agreement of the other day stands. The two of you have to also agree that, okay, we also agree that you agree that I was going to buy a Rolls Royce. I take away your agreement. I take away your agreement. I take away your agreement. So when you do that, then it is cancelled. When you agree, it is the agreement of that day that God will start working with you. Are we here? So you can't be mean. Some people are very mean. I will show you. Didn't I agree that you will build it? You won't build it again. It's too late. You prayed it. It will shock you that the person will build the house. Yeah. And you will carry your blood pressure. Yeah. Are we here? Yeah. So what are we going to agree? We are going to agree today because, you see, I don't know, except for those who have gone voluntarily, no member of this church has been deported. Yeah. <laughs> No member. Do we understand? No member. No member has been deported. I've visited people in the Shenzhen camps, but not our members. I've gone to prisons, your stand, but not our members. Maybe they saw us on TV and they called us. Are we here? So are we going to agree? Does God answer prayers? Yes, sir. Does God answer prayer of agreement? Yes. We are going to agree that every member of this ministry, you know, miraculously, because, you know, I keep counting. The, the list is just reducing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Be, believe me, it was a long list. <laughs> it was a very long list. Nah, if, you don't, if you look at me too much, I'll call your name. <laughs> the list was a very long one. The list was a very long one. But we, we kept ticking. Amen. To be honest, it has reduced. And the Bible says in the book of Job, Job chapter 5, he said, the God who did not forsake us on six occasions yeah. shall not forsake us on the seventh occasion. Amen. 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 Oh, you didn't get that. The God who did not forsake us on six occasions will not forsake us on the seventh. Let me quickly, Job chapter 5, let me, let me see. That God, verse 19, let's see. God who did not, the interpretation is that God who did not forsake you on six occasions. Yeah. You understand? You were, you were born. You had some uh, serious amen as a child. You survived it. They said, you know, your brain was damaged. You graduated. You didn't get what I'm trying to say. Yes, six occasions. They said you couldn't get that job, you got. They said you couldn't marry, you married. 
They said you couldn't do this. You, you, you give by, you give by. You understand? They said you could not do this. It is not the next one that yes. is. You should collate all this. I said, no, 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 no. God, who has delivered me in six troubles, it's not the same one that they will run away. So just gather six troubles that God has delivered you from and always make the next one the seventh. Amen. <laughs> you didn't get that. Make the next one the seventh. Always make the next one the seventh. God who did not forsake you on six occasions. How can he, how can he forget you on the seventh? So we have counted more than six, six miraculous uh, interventions start to trilly. So, you are the servant. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are the servant. Amen. And you shall not be disappointed. Amen. Are we ready to pray? Yes, sir. We are going to, now, let's go down to Matthew 18, 19. God, who did not forsake you in six troubles, will not come in the servant and say, I'm tired. No, God will not be tired. Amen. God Almighty will not be tired. Amen. The only thing I will just tell every one of us is that. You want to hear this? Our dreams are not big enough. Our dreams are not big enough. I want big dreamers. Stop dreaming big. Because it's better for you to aim the sun and land on the moon. Yeah than for you not to aim at anything. You remain where you are. Yeah. Oh, God. Yes. Take, for instance, now, you set a target that in the name of Jesus, in the next three years, I'm going to be a millionaire. And you prayed and walked towards not millionaire in Naira, in pounds and dollars. If we begin to walk towards it, listen, from somebody who was indebted, maybe from a minus, and after three years, you have 200,000 pounds cash. Are you not better off? Yeah. What if we didn't do anything? Be a big dreamer. Dream big. Write your... There is no crime there. So far, your dream doesn't make you destroy value. Yeah. Be very, very careful. Don't let your dream cause you to destroy value. What is value destruction? You go and damage a bank, rob a bank, you've destroyed, the, you've destroyed value. You carry drugs, you've destroyed value. Yeah. Is that, oh, are we here? Yes, Child trafficking. Sex trafficking. Value destruction. Don't destroy value. Get to the next level by adding value. Yeah. Are we here? Yes, Just think of what can I do? What can I say? What can I broker? Some of you now, you're, you and I now, uh, just that British passport alone can turn your life around. Because there are people in other parts of Africa who are looking for those they can trust. You yeah. see, birds of integrity are very scarce. Yeah. People are looking, even thieves, even yeah. those who have stolen, Money. even thieves who have yeah. looted treasures. They don't want people to steal from what they have stolen. <laughs> a thief will steal. You stand and be looking for a trusted person that come. Don't steal this money from you. Don't steal. But you stole it. Even thieves are looking for men of integrity. Honestly, you know what the Bible says? Your integrity shall preserve you. So integrity has the power of preserving you from poverty. It can preserve you. That's what the Bible says. Your integrity shall preserve you. People are looking. People are looking for those that they can trust. I have a friend who has been here before. Very wealthy. Amen. Ed Douglas knows him. The guy was so poor that his poverty was P.O. Oh. But he had integrity. How did he make it? He had integrity. He will never rob you. He will never cheat you. 
Then people began to now shift things to him. Everybody would just say, I know one person, no, he will not cheat you. Whatever you take. He began to open offices upon offices. At the time, he had five in the same business. He was here the other time. Yeah. Yeah. Please, if you know, just raise your hand. Don't let Pastor Stanley alone be shouting. Your stand. At the other church. Yes, at the other yes. church. Uh -huh. If you know, those who know already, who saw him, just shout hallelujah. Just only those. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. For you to give, he said, I just made 14 million, and I said, God should take all of it. Yeah. 14 million. So I just, in one of those businesses, recently I just told God to pack all of them. Let's take. So ladies and gentlemen, he was here in church. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, within two weeks, God doubled the, God doubled the 14. God doubled the 14. That's how rich. Do you understand? Integrity. Your integrity. Okay, can you see? Thank you. Let's read it. Let integrity. Mm. Your integrity can preserve you just because you are tr you can be trustworthy. Somebody can say, Let me buy your star, let me buy property here. If you can help me seal the day, your son is not a thief, your commission is 10%. And you will do it, no story, you will tell another person. No story, you will tell another person. No story, you will tell another person. By the time you gather all the 10%, you buy your own. Integrity, preserving you from poverty, from shame. Do we get what I'm trying to say? That was how my friend blew it and crushed poverty under the soles of his feet. Permanently. Permanently. Perm when I say permanently, I mean permanently. He will soon be here again. I spoke to him about two or three weeks ago. He's come. He will soon visit us again. Permanently. Just by telling the truth. Some of you think, you know, you can rise by line. You will also fall by line. He upholds all things by the word of his power or the word of his truth. So let's agree now that no man, no woman shall be deported in this church. No man, no matter how bad that case is. Listen, listen. We, I, I don't like when people think they have. British passport. They can't be bothered. You knew how you suffered. You saw, yeah, yeah, yeah. When they are praying about immigration, they say, I, I, I have moved on. Uh, that's not my level. I have moved on. You've moved on. What about those who have not moved on? The Bible said, through the comfort that I have comforted, you comfort others. Second Corinthians 1 today. By the comfort that I have comforted you, by that same comfort, by the comfort that I have comforted you, by that same comfort, blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and of all comfort. Verse 4. Yes, sir. Who comforted us? Verse 4. Who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in, in any trouble by the same comfort. By the same comfort. If you are comforted by immigration, you can say, come. The God who helped me will help you. Those who have married, you can meet those who are not yet married. That The God who gave me my wife will give you your wife. Amen. You can go and say, the God who gave me my husband will give you your husband. Amen. By that same comfort. By that same comfort. You may not be able to comfort anyone in another area, but by that same comfort. But that area, that particular area, but that area in which God has helped you, you carry the power to comfort. When, when God is talking about comfort, God is not saying, but let it shall be well. That's not God's comfort. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is another comfort. Like Jesus. True? The Holy Spirit is like, did Jesus say, Sister Lola, it's going to be well. Did Jesus ever say that? 
he, he made it well. There was no time to use the Holy Spirit said, ah, the woman of name, your son has died. <laughs> May the God comfort you. Was that how he raised the child? The comfort of God does the job. Amen. The comfort of God is not motivational speaking. The comfort of God is not saying it shall be well. No, the comfort of God makes it well. Amen. So when you are telling somebody that God who helped me shall help you, you say with audacity. Yes, you say with audacity that this thing shall happen. Amen. You say with audacity. Amen. Another comforter, the Holy Ghost is another comforter. He doesn't come. Now, what we see in churches is that don't worry, he shall be well. No, you see, you pray, you demand, be well. Amen. We can't we can't keep pushing what God will do in the future. When he has finished it in the past. What God has finished in the past. We can't keep pushing it that it will happen in the future. Let's take advantage of it now. Oh, let's say, give us this day. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Not give us tomorrow. Give us this. There are things. He daily loads us with benefit. There are benefits for each day, each day, each day, each day, each day, each day, each day. Give us this day our daily bread. He daily loads us with benefit. Don't let people begin to tell you it's going to be done in 2028. When there are benefits, you should start enjoying now. By the same comfort. So if you know that God has helped you, start to truly help you. We are going to agree, no man, no woman, in this church, in this church, I don't know of anywhere in this church, shall be deported. One way or the other, help shall come. Open your mouth and declare that help now. Open your mouth. Before this year runs out, before this year, before this year runs out, Yana Boto, Yanamanaskos Kavrina Boshanda Aliaba, Aliaba. Pray, pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Daremos cabrima na toko no botoko. Yelemenes cabrima na hoshe. Pray, 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 pray. Yanamo shabrima kasanda kurima na tanda. Yasakra dos cabrima na shanda kurima na paparia. Yasakrima shoko. Yelemenes kakashoko. Briana makashoko. Ziana kasika bara. La proteke toko tiga toko pateke diva a Ya toko fretos kambrima kata prima kotorima na teke La toske toske toke prima na toko Ya saka tolima na sheke prima na Ya sapra toko skambrima na toko diva kataye Ya sapra poto skambrima kata skotolia Ya sabrima na skambra ma kotolia
Acts chapter 12. You see, the Lord said, his house shall be a house of prayer. But painfully, people don't pray again. You come to church, and the prayer is less than five minutes. In the whole service. My house shall be a house of prayer. Jesus entered the temple and beat the spirit of buying and selling. Some come to church to do business. Some are in church today because they want to sell clothes. You understand? Some want to sell insurance. They just started insurance. They've not been coming to church. But they just went for an insurance training. What are the sec what, who are the first set of my reality of grace? You just sit there and say, it's good to serve God. <laughs> you are serving insurance. You are not serving God. You are serving insurance because you think Pastor Olu have gathered people for you. You understand? Yeah, that's what they do. They want to sell a building. They come to church. It is then they will know pastors are, they will, their pastors are good. From January to February, from December, they insulted pastors and they are tight. How they take tight. But now they start business that they need the crowd now. Let me go to church. Mm -hmm. And some of, sometimes we are not designed. Acts chapter 12. Verse 5. Acts 12, verse 5. Please, quickly now, what's happening? Are you with me? Peter, therefore, was kept. Don't let anyone disturb those who are there, please. I don't want more than one person doing that job. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So we should not stop praying concerning the status of our people. Prayer was prayed, was made without ceasing. Prayer was made without ceasing. We, they kept praying, they kept praying, they kept praying. Every time the occasion comes, they prayed, they remembered. Because when a little finger hurts, the whole body hurts. Do we understand? The whole body hurts. Just imagine the, the church driver has no paper and they deport that person. You won't have free ride again. So this is how you will think. Just think about that. Verse 6. 6. And when Herod will have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. And when immigration will have deported them, the same night between immigration of his yeah. bound with chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Verse 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and light shined in the prison yeah. and smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. Verse 8. Quickly. And the angel said unto him, Guide thyself. By night, Sanders, and, not, and, and so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Let me tell you, God will not dress you up. Whatever you can do, an angel will not help you do it. Put on your clothes, put on your sanders. Oh, do you understand? So don't think that uh, God, come and feed me, won't feed you. What you should learn from that is that, you understand? He said, Guide thyself. Bind on thy sanders. You understand? Put on thy clothes and put your garment on and follow me. What you are supposed to do, don't second your responsibility to divinity. Are we here? Verse 9. We are going to see something now. And he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true which was done by the angel. But thought he saw a vision. You see, some of you will be shocked by the time they give you your papers. You will still think you are dreaming. You didn't get what I'm trying to say. 
You see, some of you will be waiting for one document before they do it, and they will send it without the document. And he went out, okay, verse 10. He thought he saw a vision. That means he was shocked. When they were past the first and the second world, they came unto the iron gate that lead into the city, which opened to them on his own accord. You know what an iron gate is? An iron gate is a spiritual, there are spiritual iron gates. He said he opened on his own accord. Can you imagine there are some, there are some places we will get into without effort? Listen, listen, so you thought. You thought it was without effort. It was with an effort. What was the effort, Sister Titi? The effort of the prayers of the saints. The gate was there. It didn't open on its own accord when they didn't pray. Why did that op- Why didn't the gate open for James? They killed James some days before. They took off his head. Oh God. They took off the head of James. Why did the gate open? They said it opened on its own accord. No, what we make things open on their own accord is our prayers. Shout a big amen. amen. Say it, my neighbor. If we do nothing, nothing will happen. Say it again to another person. If we do nothing, nothing will happen. Pray. Say it again to another person. Pray. Tell another person. Pray, 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 pray. If we do nothing, nothing happens. If we do nothing, nothing will happen. The gate opened on its own accord, just like that. To them of his own accord, and they went out. Some of you are going out of your problem. <laughs> and passed on through one city, and forthwith the angel departed. As soon as God thinks he has helped you, yeah. Your stand, it will leave you. You can't say, oh God, now comb my hair. That means God wants us to be responsive. Are we here? Are we ready to pray? In the name of what? Jesus. We are going to command angels to go. And if you are here today, if you are privileged to be here, whisper your name. As the church begins to pray. Say, God, they are talking about me. Send me help. Let this prayer help me. That's what you should be praying. Let's pray. Releasing the papers. Release. 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 Lord, let your angels be sent. 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 Let your angels. Let your angels be sent to help every man and every woman. Good paper, I have to be here. Let your angels be sent. 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 Let help come. Let help come. Let help come for every man and every woman. Let your angels be sent. 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 Let there be help. Ya sabre no pata kuni mahanda. Ya na mos kamri makas kamri mahase kamri mayakatiya. In the name of Jesus. The last thing is that we begin to invoke mercy. 
Invoke the mercy of God upon every difficult case. Oh, you don't understand. Yeah, yeah, because you know why the testimony of Sister Kelly just stands in the air. What makes you believe that when you have reached menopause, you can give Basera? Yeah. If that testimony was not there, you are, you are finished. I don't know whether you understand. So, there is another person in the house whose testimony should motivate us. Sister uh, Grace Duro. At least you remember the Jamaican woman who came here. She was not in any way qualified. Thank you. She brought the home office letter that we've checked you. There is no ground. You have, okay, thank you very much. Brian, thank you. You have no ground to stay in this city. But we choose to have mercy on you. Yeah. How many of you saw the woman? Thank you. If you saw the woman, those who saw the woman standing that I showed you, shout hallelujah. Only those shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So that means I'm not lying. I read it out. You have no ground. You have no ground. This is a ground of power yeah. and a ground of mercy. Yeah. Your case will not be hopeless. Yeah. They said there is no ground to give you. We are giving you uncompassionate ground. There is no other. So his compassion, they fail not. The compassion of God, they fail not. So let's invoke the mercy of God upon every person. And if you are here, just say, I receive, I receive, I receive. We invoke the mercy of God. 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 Let this mountain pass. Let this mountain pass. Thank God for what is already in progress. Just begin to thank God. Let that be the name of the Most High God. In Jesus' mighty name. Without disrupting the service, let me just greet three people. Congratulations, and you can have your seats. Three people. After three people, just have your seats. Amen. Amen. I hope you like the dry bowl series. Yes. We are not going to keep quiet yes. until everything that looks impossible we bow before the possibility and anointing of God. Amen. We can shout that amen again. Amen. Second Samuel, we want to check briefly another dry bone situation. And please, as the word of God comes, just put yourself in that uh, situation. Because if you cannot find yourself in that situation, then it cannot be of you cannot benefit. Second Samuel, talking about dry bones shall rise again. 
chapter 9, I read from verse number 1. I will be very fast. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto him, Unto the king, Behold, is in the house of Mashiach, the son of Amiel, in Lodiba. Then David sent and fetched him out of the house of Mashiach, the son of Amiel, from Lodiba. Somebody is about to relocate. Now, listen, the relocation may not take you out of London. We are talking about statutory yes. relocation. Yes. And it can also be physical or geographical. Yes. It can also be geographical. Yes. Amen. Yes. Can, it could be, can be geographical, can be statutory. Yes. Amen. Yes. It will, but right away, it's starting with an ideological relocation. Mental. Because without an ideological relocation, hmm, you can't have statutory relocation. You cannot have physical relocation. Do we understand? As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. So he is. Hallelujah. As you think, so what is going to happen is that the word of God that is coming now will first tamper with your thinking. Amen. If you first tamper with your thinking that your case is not over. Amen. Do we understand? Yes, the king sent and fetched him. And God is about to send helpers to you. Amen. Amen. You... You will just be like the case of uh, Akim, or large one. The, the Nigerian basketballer, Akim or large one. He calls himself Akim the dream because he has not woken up. You understand? If it's a dream, may I not wake up? Akim was not a basketballer. I came played handball. Was a handballer because he was tough. They went for a games, just then, uh, uh, maybe one particular festival, and they called him to come, just to make up for a basketball team. That was how it, the whole journey started. Today, all is history. Came the multimillionaire in dollars, a world figure. Who said your case is over? Who said your case is over? The case is not over. Yeah. Verse 6. Now, when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David. He fell on his face and did reverence. And the king said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. Look at what a situation did to a prince. Remember his father was ruling before. Before problem came. His grandfather was the king. <coughs> and the father was heir apparent to the throne. But calamity before them. Uh, befell them. You understand? The man died 
The grandfather died and his father died. Nothing was said about the mother. Yeah. Nothing was said about the mother. What happened to the mother of uh, Mephibosheth? To the extent that it was somebody else that nursed him. What happened? Nothing was mentioned about the mother. What happened? Calamity came. He was not born lame. It was in the heat of the problem when they were, you know, I mean, in the, in the bit to escape. Yeah. As a child of maybe five years old, the, the nurse was carrying him. He fell and broke his spinal cord. Then he became paralyzed, became lame. Somebody that was born into wealth. Somebody that ate with golden spoon. Somebody that didn't know poverty. Everything worked well for him. The best nursery school, best of everything. He lived in the palace. He was born in the palace. He lived in royalty. The calamity came. There are some of us today that when you look back at where you are coming from and where you are today, you realize, can I ever recover? It's a dry bone situation. Yeah. Sometimes you want to muster courage to say that I will recover, but your age will tell you not at this age. Your age will tell you not at this age. Uh, if you realize, if you had this kind of word about 20 years ago, I still had strength, but not now. You had what Sister Kelly said. If I, had, if I was hearing this kind of words, probably the things I have done wrongly, I would not have yeah. done, done them that put me into trouble and that made my case terrible. But just imagine the mental trauma that went through her. Every time, you understand, or everything she did erroneously began to pop up before her. Every time she wanted to do, you know, an opening came, but something checkmated her. Something acted as an impedance. You stand, you cannot go. There was a, a blockade. Just imagine that. Put yourself into someone who was born in royalty. You had everything going on for you. You had everything going on for you. Then... Not your source, your channel of blessings died. Because God is our source. If Jonathan had died, listen, if Jonathan had died and Saul was still alive, Mephibosheth would not have would not have any problem. Can you imagine the two people that could help you? They died. And you who will have helped yourself in a bit to escape, you fell down and lost your strength. You lost your feet. That means you can't make progress. And they carried him and put him in a place called Lodiba. And Lodiba means a dry land. A dry land, a, a difficult land, a, a dry land. Some of us are in our Lodiba today. Forget that you are in London. Lodiba is a spiritual state. Do you understand? Lodiba is a place where you are served of all ideas. There is no fruitfulness of ideas. Please let me tap my brother. Yes, good. Do, do we understand? Lodiba is a state in is a state of spiritual dryness. Have you ever been there in which for over a year, two years, you don't even know what to do? Just think about it. You don't know what to do. You really want to work. You really want to do something, but what do I do? Everything you want to do, others are doing it. Hallelujah. Lodiba. It's a place of 
your stand. Dryness of ideas. Dryness of ideas. Dryness of money. Dryness of friendship. Dryness of network. Your network, zero. Your finances, zero. Ideas, zero. Everything, zero. And you are there. You don't get promoted in Lodiba. It's in the house of Amir, Amiel. Is that not so? A squatter. Are you squatting today? He didn't have his own house. He was squatting. How many of us are squatting today? You can be a squatter businessman. The business you are doing, somebody owns it. You just show up. Do you understand that? You just show up. I, I came here so that they would know that I really want to work. You hang around that place. They, they transact businesses behind your back. At the end of the day, you don't know what transpired. The thousands or hundreds of thousands of pounds that have gone. But they gave you 50 pounds for the week. And you are falling down, thanking. It's a laudable experience. Giving you peanut. The Bible says in the abundance of water, the food is thirsty. They will not be foolish. Amen. We will look unto God, Amen. the source of our wisdom. Amen. Can you just imagine somebody being in that state? You know, in that, you know this thing touched me. It, it, when I was studying this, it touched me. That, you understand, a priest came. Yeah. When came before the man who served his wow. grandfather and his father's best friend, and he said, your servant is here, sir. Life has a way of humbling us. Those who couldn't talk to you, those that it would have been a privilege that they shook hand with you, will now look down on you as an entity because of the present situation. You look back. There's nothing that can be as painful your stand. It, it, sometimes it is not what you are passing through. It is what you are experience, experiencing because of what you are passing through. Yeah. It is the reaction of friends who celebrated you. Friends who said you are the only person. Friends who said you are their alpha, you are their omega. Who cannot pick your cause anymore. Yeah. Because levels have changed. Lodiba, levels have changed. You are not in their class anymore. They will even return. You even offer prayer that God shall bless you today. You should not die. It, uh, your WhatsApp will indicate that they read it. But who are you? Who are you that they should even say amen and say thank you? I want you to know that God has not forsaken you. Amen. Just think about what I'm saying. And don't do that to other people too. If there are those you two are looking down on because of their present situation. You know why I'm very, very, very careful when people are passing through trials? Because I don't want to hide my face in their triumph. You didn't get what I'm trying to say? Deli people who are passing through trials are very delicate people. They become touchy. They interpret everything. It's not, it's, it's not their fault. Please. If you pass through it, you will understand. You say, why are you always reading meanings to everything? Because, you're saying, because you are giving me the platform to read meanings to everything. You are giving me the platform to read meanings to everything. When I had money, I, you told me that you are the first that will give my wedding invitation. But you are doing baby christening. You didn't remember. You gave him wedding invitation because he was an MD at that time. MD of a blue chip company. But the job is gone. You didn't get that. 
Now that the job is gone, why waste my time? You understand? Are you friends with someone because of what you can get or because of what you can give? Ask yourself, let your friendship with people be what you can bring to that table. Yes. Because if I'm thinking of what I can bring to better the life of Brother Victor, and Brother Victor is looking at me that what can I bring to better my life, there won't be offense. Yes. Now, listen. You know, the reason why I'm saying that is that if it's what I can bring, I'm always bringing my, I'm always bringing my, what will happen when I am in dire need? That means it will bring more. So, and there will be no, there will be no room for me to say, just to read meaning to anything. But if it's what I can take, and what I can take, and you, you serve me, you drain me, because you are, some of, some people are not, they don't know that they are part of your own problem. Yeah. Some of the money he used in sponsoring you, what if he used it in buying land? He sponsored you, he said, with only 60,000 pounds. And that, that, that 60,000 pounds, if you have changed it maybe 15 years ago yeah. and bought the land, you will have been reselling those land now to sustain yourself in your present predicament. Yeah. But your sponsor level will have changed. You have level of change. And there are not many people that you squatted today. You squatted them when they came just turn to England, but they have deleted your number. They don't even know where you stay. And they can't, they can't be bothered where you stay. You see, can I say something? Let me teach you one word of wisdom that will carry you for long, for a very long time, and that will shield you from calamity and shame. Are you ready? Yeah. Always project the good that somebody has done. One. Highlight that above the evil. Romans chapter 12 verse 21. Let's see. Romans 12 21. Romans 12. He said, and be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Yes, yeah, the person has done you evil. But is there nothing good that the person has done that should overcome that evil? Oh, do you understand? Oh, you didn't get what I'm trying to say. If evil overcomes evil, overcomes good, you are evil. If for one singular mistake, you can cancel the good that people have done. People talk about, you hear all manner of pastoral abuse. Do you know that the most abused people are pastors? Yes. Nobody talks about pastoral abuse. Those who fasted for 21 days of fasting. You didn't even tell them. Some knew that you fasted with them. Some you went to court with them. Some you did everything to help them. It is then Satan will now begin to tell them, your turn. You did this. You did that. You can't even remember one good that they have done. When you came and you were haggard. When you came and you were smelling. Yeah, people have come close that we have who are smelling. They were a physical stench. I'm not talking about spiritual. Physically smelling. You help them, clean them up. As soon, you see, as soon as they believe that maybe they can now fly alone, they will start finding time. The church is long. The church is far. But you are living farther. And you are coming then. You bought a house closer, it's far. But when you had problem and you are living three times the distance, you are coming. You are coming. Aha, what can I do? Now you are bigger. You say, just check the reason. You just have to check people's, people's character and know why they pass through what they pass through. And why there is a propensity that they will still go through that thing. Just check people's behavior. You didn't get what I'm trying to say. 
You know, when you check people's behavior sometimes, sometimes, please be careful how you just dive to carry people's problem. Because you don't know what they've been doing. You don't know their track record. Somebody is coming from another church. You just die. You, oh, you carry the person. Hello. The pastor did this to you. You better shut up because you will be the pers- next person is going to name. Habits die hard. The Bible says when a leopard changes skin in a day. A leopard cannot change his skin in a day. Who you are is who you are. It's just, just time. When you want to know who somebody is, let him have little comfort. Trials do not reveal us. Triumph does. Trials do not reveal. Everybody is humble. Deuteronomy 8.3. Deuteronomy 8.3. I didn't say that. Look at what God said in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3. He said that we humble them with hunger. So that means when there is no food, people naturally will be humble. Let's read it. And he humbled, and he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger. And fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of thee. But the bottom line is that God said he humbled them with hunger. So when people are hungry, when people have, they don't have money, they are naturally humble. But it's not the proof of their true character. It is only money that we project to. Bible says money answers all things, or money reveals all things, or money amplifies all things. Did you check what happened to Mephibosheth? He said, Thy servant. Oh, behold, thy servant. That got to me. But later, Mephibosheth too displayed his own attitude. After he was helped. Let's continue reading verse 7. Uh, because of my time, so that we just uh, pray. How many people have been blessed today? Right. You know, we are quick to say, this is what somebody did to me. This is what somebody did to me. What about what you did to others? Did you get what I'm trying to say? What about those? Yes, it is true that maybe... They behave to you one kind. What about that singular help that bailed you out? That singular help that made you to cross from one level to the other. That help. Project that. Project, always project that. If you are always saying they did this to me, they did this to me, you are an evil person. Project one. We read, we read Romans 12, 21. Don't be overcome of evil. Overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. Your stand. Yes, the person did you evil. What about that good he has done? Let it overcome every other thing. Project that. Project that good. That said, this person did this to me. This person did this to me. Then God will know that you are a good person. Proverbs 17, verse 13. Please, because there are a lot of people who, you start, you hear, I can't be cursed. I cannot be cursed. I'm free. I can't be cursed. Hey, the scriptures cannot be broken. I can't be jailed. I can't be jailed. Go and steal. Then you know that new, re- uh, new creation reality has its own whatever. Let's read it powerfully, please. Who so rewarded evil for good? Somebody gave you a cup of water that kept you alive. Who so rewarded evil for good? You so is it, that is the word of God. Who so rewarded evil for good? Between Judas and Jesus, who was the first to die? He, re- he, re- he rewarded evil for good. He died before even the one he betrayed. Yeah. He died before Jesus himself died. He's in hell roasting. 
he died. By the time Jesus was going to say, Father, forgive them for they know not, Judas have died. He can't be forgiven in the grave. You didn't get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it was too late. Before Father forgive them on the cross, he has committed suicide. Who saw the world as evil for any good thing. Always project the good that people have done. Because we are in a very terrible age. An age of disgruntled people. A bunch of ingratitude, uh, disgruntled people that it is, it is prophetic. Yeah, right. Second Timothy 3 tells us, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Very difficult times shall come. Yeah. Men shall be heady. You give somebody money, what has he done? Please, did you work for me? <laughs> now you are very, very careful. You stand. I'm very, very careful. When somebody says they have need now, you see that I don't need, need. It's better I tell you I can't even need it before you want to meet a little. Because they can use that to insult you. That can you imagine? I asked for half a million and it's only 50,000. Ha, 50,000. If you had it, you would not be asking me. Or 20,000. That's the one. And please, don't, don't loan people money that you cannot walk away from. Especially, are you getting my point? You do get what I'm trying to say. Especially when you know the person has no integrity. When people come to loan money, the money you will loan them, let it be the money you can give. So that when they don't give you, you are not bothered. To keep your faith going. If not, your prayer life will be dis dis dismantled. Are we here? Who so, who so, your stand, who so rewarded good, evil for the good. He said, evil will not depart. That house does not mean house number 13 or 14. Yes. So, some people can say, well, I will say number, uh, please. Which, which house were we living when we offended uh, Kamaru? <laughs> 15. We have to pack. We have to pack. Yes, now, because the preaching of today, they say even we stay in that house. We have to relocate quick, quick. <laughs> Is that what they are talking about? No. It means your lineage. Wherever you go, the curse goes with you. Yeah. The new house is the new cursed house. Yeah. It says it shall not depart from your lineage. It shall not depart from your lineage. It shall not depart from your lineage. Evil shall not depart from your lineage. You know why? You know why it is like that? Can I quickly tell you why? Before we, we do our own relocation and look for her, you know why it's like that? Because anyone who repays evil for good blocks a thousand others. That's why it's a serious offense. They block a thousand others that day. Because every time you want to do good, you will remember that I for help you. But I know what I did to Kyle. The waiting I suffer for Kyle Day face. I'm an evil man. What did Kyle Day do to me? I carried Kyle Day. I took Kyle Day. What did I not do for my Pekin? I do them for Kyle Day. I was at Panty 17 yeah. times because of Kyle Day. Panty. Some of you don't know where Panty is. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Party thing, prison. 24 times because of Kyle. The case has not ended. Please go. If it, if it is happy you that will promote me, let me remain unpromoted. It blocks other people and block you. Because you can no longer, because 
You become a reference point. You affect others. Oh God. Do you think let's check Matthew 24 verse 12. You see, I'm talking. You, you don't know that I know what I'm saying. Huh? Matthew 24. Listen. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because evil shall abound. You can't show love anymore. You opened your house to somebody who was you opened your house to somebody who didn't have a house and he put you into trouble. You now saw a genuinely homeless person. Because iniquity shall abound, your love went cold. You opened the door to receive him. Have you prayed? You looked. Oh, the bowels of mercy ran through you. Said, I'm sorry. You closed the door. You went back. It pained you. It grieved your heart. But you sent the person back. You understand? Have you been there in a difficult situation? You wanted to help somebody. You were close. Things ran through your mind. Ah, this was what I did. And uh, what I got out of it. The person, when you are looking at the person's face, he didn't know what he was doing. He thought God was ministering to you. He did not know that it was the devil ministering to you. Yeah. He was still, he was standing, hopeful, hopeful, saying, thank you, Jesus, in his heart. Thank you. Ah, he was so answer me. You just closed the door, sorry. Ah! Which kind of devil is this man? But from what God was telling him, it was not God talking to him. It was experience. Yeah. Because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall was cold. Galatians 6, 8. You see, because so that, is, Pastor Stanley, are we on track? Yes. Okay. That's the chief of staff. <laughs> Amen. Because, let's see, verse 9. Verse 9, precisely. Let's read it. Why we, you see, don't be weary in well doing. Now, if I help you and you are always saying thank you, I help by your thank you, I help Sister Lola thank you, and you, what will make me weary? Before they can say, don't be weary in well doing, people have wounded yeah. you. God is trying to tell you, amongst those you are helping, you will meet mixed multitude. There are those now, all they are talking about now, is people who have helped them. Destroying themselves. Thinking that they are destroying. Thy servant. Thy servant. If you have such a propensity, don't do it. Don't be the reason why others will be denied help. But do you know there is a way in which you can help somebody? And you will be the reason why others will begin to do good. Amen. Let me give you an example. Somebody comes into this country, you help the person, the person went, and all of a sudden, he just knocked on your door. After three or four years, Uncle, I just want to see you, and whatever, and he goes to say, this car key is for you. For one week, what did I do? Ha. Uncle, you have this for one week. One week? For a 1-6 Jaguar, 2016? No, no, no. Ah, Uncle, lie, lie. No way, Uncle. Ah, that one week. The code at Farindin. Yeah. Will somebody call Farangidin? Yeah. We. We always make mistakes, is that not so? 
Somebody called the father and give it. I mean, listen, this was a person who did, couldn't call father the father and give it. He called the father and give it at that time. Then you now forgot that he couldn't call father the when you first said father and give it. Pick me. Sister Celia knows what we are saying. Definitely not me. <laughs> but Sister Celia knows. Somebody came and said, Come, where are you? Say, I'm at Farangidi. Where is Farangidi? He said, Come, I'm feeling cold. I will die. Yo. I'm shivering. I will die. Oh, oh do you make my me now? Where are you? So that we pick up Farangidi. <laughs> that ever since I've been in London, I don't know where Farangidi is. <laughs> They now told him, listen, they now told him that spell it. After spelling, oh, far in this, say, get out! <laughs> One of more, I had to bear. <laughs> Are we here? We've got home. Brother, that the person did it, could he, could he pronounce far in this? But now, a former Farangidi. Yeah. Are we here? Yeah. You have your own. <laughs> Is it not Woolly Week? Is it not sad work? So let's just keep quiet. Now, if the person brings a car and gives you that car for staying with you for one week, what do you think we do for any other person visit? Even, even if you don't want, your wife will remind you that, ah, this car is a benefit to, we don't know who else. It may be a house tomorrow. But did you see that? Let your character Promote the good in others. Amen. Don't let people check your disgruntled behavior and close the bowels of mercy towards others. The Bible says, because iniquity shall abound, ingratitude shall abound. The love of many, they had love before. It shall go cold. You know when you are a cold-hearted person, Mean. People will become mean. May God have mercy. Amen. May the Lord have mercy. Amen. So now let's see. Second Samuel 9. The man called himself. What did the man say? The man called himself a dog. Yeah. You, you son. Sorry. If I'm teaching... Anything drops, I have to explain it. Do you understand? If we have to go towards several times, don't worry. Because we have to make it practical. The, the reason why I'm here is not because you cannot read and write. You are here for the explanation. To expand the scripture. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And David said unto him, fear not, for I will surely show you the kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake, and I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Somebody is about to receive mercy. Yeah. Verse number eight. And he bowed himself and said, what is thy servant? You see, servant again. That thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am. Can you see what he, you see, he saw himself as a dog. Ah, try are no good. Pains are real. Hardship is real. Oh, hardship is real. Hardship has a language. Dog, servant. The worst thing you can do for a man 
is for a man to begin to tell you where he's coming from. That means he's being hurt. When a man begins to tell you, he will look at you. Ah, that you are doing this to me. Do you know I was once a minister of the Federal Republic? You've wounded him. You've wounded him. Because he will like program it and rewind that in my heyday, your type can't talk to me. Don't let people begin to tell you how glorious their past was. It's not a good thing. You've wounded him. You've touched him. You, you've touched. Yes, sir, you've touched him. And that is why I told you, Delhi, people facing trials are very delicate people. You have to, yes, because people passing through trials, they are delicate people. Amen. Amen. He said, Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given thy master's son all that pertained to Saul and to his house. Verse 10. Thou, therefore, and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruit, that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy servant, Master's son shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had 16 sons and 20 servants. Let's add them together. How many sons? Plus 20? Plus Ziba himself? So 36 people will now be working for the lame man. He said, they will, I'm restoring. You know the, how big the land of Saul was? The former king. I'm restoring the whole land, till the whole land, and sell and bring the money. He will eat continually at my table. Amen. Amen. Verse number 11. Then Ziba said unto the king, according to to all that thy Lord the king had commanded his servants, so shall thy servant do. Do you have a choice? <laughs> and as for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. <laughs> Somebody is entering into royalty. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't cost God anything. Verse 12, it does not cost God anything. It does not cost God anything. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. Because I told you to count now. You say, oh, are they working? Yes, they were all plus Ziba. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem. Jerusalem means peace, city of peace. From city of dryness to city of peace. The word shalom means all round prosperity. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing broken. They transported him from Lodiba to Jerusalem. For he did eat continually at the king's table. And he was lame on his feet. Now, let me tell you, in other words, your incapacitation will not deny you of your enjoyment. Yeah. I sat down one day, you know, and I knew why Solomon wrote. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Time and chance happened to them all. He was talking by experience. Yeah. He said, I have sat down. The race is not. Because he saw somebody who was eating like a king. Yeah. And he said, Dad, is he part of our son? Is he? Dad? You know, some of the. Solomon will talk. Dad, who is that? It's lame. So he was my master's son. 
master saw it came with where is it came with us? Let it get out. Will you shut up? Yeah. Will you shut up? Listen to why Mephibosheth was remembered. You know why he was remembered? His father, Jonathan, yeah. and David cut a covenant. And you will read that covenant in Second, um, second Samuel. Is it second of verse, verse 20, first Samuel 20 or so? Verse, first Samuel 20, 11 to 17. You will see that there. That was where they entered the covenant. Amen. Amen. That if anything happens to me, will you show my seed kindness? They swore to each other. But there is someone Glory. that God will always remember. Amen. And will not permit you. Yes. Let me tell you, sin deformed you. Before Jesus took you from the Lodi bar of sin yeah. and take you to the Jerusalem of Zion. Amen. Regardless of your past, you will eat continually at the king's table. Amen. So don't let your past condemn you. Amen. Because listen, there is no way, there is no way David will beat God to it. David remember the covenant with his friend. And he helped his son. Yeah. God is going to remember his covenant with Jesus. Amen. And help you. Amen. Let's rise up. Amen. You are going to tell yourself that Father for Jesus is sick. Amen. You understand? Because of Jesus. I refuse to suffer. Amen. Because of Jesus, let there be a shift for me. Because of Jesus, because of Jesus, I relocate from every lonely bar of my life. Shout amen. I told you, how many of us have our mental shift that mercy will come and knock on your door? I have something to ask you. Listen to me. I have something to ask you. Are you ready? Yes, Was Mephibosheth expecting it? No. That's number one. Number two. Was Mephibosheth there when they cut the covenant? No. <laughs> you are going to reap the benefit of what you know nothing about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey. What to know nothing about. You see, so that you, listen, I'm telling you this so that you learn to give God the glory. Amen. So don't, don't say, you know, I went to Oxford, I went to Harvard. That was not what helped Jerusalem, uh, before Bush. Was it Harvard that helped him? No. Was it Oxford? No. Cambridge? No. His handsomeness? No. Her beauty? Oh, what helped? Covenant. Something he knew nothing about. I mean, he had lost hope since the grace. He has lost hope. He was not even expecting it. A dry bone situation. Waiting for the day he will die. And can I tell you, when they were transporting him, oh, oh, your, your heart will break when, when, you know, a lame person just heard that your father's enemy said they should bring you. Oh, my end has come. My end has come. He weed. He didn't know how many times he weed on his pants. He didn't know the pool. Oh, you didn't have an idea. Oh, I don't think you had an idea. Your father's enemy. Your father's arch enemy. Oh, you didn't understand. The man who took your grandfather's position. They were not best of friends when your father died. Oh, God. I mean, your grandfather. They were not best of friends. This, you knew the history of Israel. That the man of, that was why he ran to Lodiba. He, he was in a hiding from the king. 
And that means, oh God, the thing finally got me. His CIA, his MI5, MI6, FBI are finally, CIA, CIA have finally caught me. Jesus Christ, I thought I was hidden. Not knowing it was a blessing looking for him. Yeah. The greatest fear of your life is bringing the greatest blessing. Yeah. That area where you are concluded is over. God is saying, I'm opening a new chapter. Amen. Now, I just want you to sit down. Listen, just imagine from today. Imagine that one good is coming to you that you didn't work for. You didn't understand. It's going to be a, it's a pleasant surprise. Amen. That you didn't work for. You didn't get what I'm trying to say. You didn't work for it. They just came to call you and involve you in a business. Just come and eat. Tell your neighbor, receive the come and eat and iron. Receive the relocation and iron. Receive the palace experience and iron. Shout a big amen. amen. Shall they begin? What you didn't expect? Favor just came. You thought you were going to die. And they were transporting you. What are you passing through today? Do you know that when Joseph was being taken to Egypt, Joseph wept. Yeah. He said, in the anguish of my soul. Oh. <laughs> they took me in the anguish of my soul. He was begging them, please have mercy, Reuben. Reuben, where are you? Issachar, Asha, are you looking at me? Ah, Judah, you're talking about Judah, please, please, please. And they began to take him to the land of prominence. Some of the things that you think will kill you is what God is going to use to catapult you. The same shame of today, the same reproach of today, and the shame of today, you've been looked down on. God will use this situation to lift you up. Amen. Can you imagine you whip into a land where you will reign, taking you to America, not knowing you will be a Barack Obama, and you are whipping, don't take me there. It's because we can't see too far. It's because we can't see too far. The pain of today will become your gain of tomorrow. Amen. So just raise your hand and receive the grace. Just receive grace for any location. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. The anointing of God is pouring. Receive grace. Receive grace. For those watching me online, receive grace. For those watching me online, the Lord will answer you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will increase you. The Lord will prosper you. The Lord will honor you. You will never be put to shame. Flesh shall be your going out. Flesh shall be your coming in. No evil shall be for you. No plague shall come near you. In the name of Jesus, you shall be remembered for good and not evil. Raise your hand and just worship God. Raise your hand and just worship Him. Adore him, adore him for your next level. Adore him for your next level. Adore him for your next level. Worship him.